Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So what we're going to be covering today's video is we're going to be looking at structural analysis, determining reactions for statically determinate beams, and this will be the fourth part in this series. So what we have here is this member shown on the left and we are told that point A and C are pins and point B is a hinge that connects these two members. So something new here, which will be the hinge. So a hinge is just a portion of a member that connects two or more portions together. Typically it's just two. So a hinge can only transfer or transfer translational forces from one portion to the other. So our first portion would be from A to B and then B to C. This hinge does not transfer and it does allow for rotation, so it does not transfer moment. So think of a hinge in a frame or a beam like this as a door hinge. It allows the door to swing, thus rotate, but it does not allow the door, the door to move vertically up and down or left and right translationally. So when we have a hinge, that means that we are going to have to split this problem into two. If we did not split this problem into two members and we had just assumed our reactions here and tried to solve for it, let's assume A, Y that way, A, X this way for our pin, and then same thing over here for C, Y, and then C sub X. Well, look what we have here. We have four unknowns to solve and using our equilibrium equations of summing forces in the Y, summing forces in the X, and then summing moments about a point, we have three equations, so the max we can have is three unknowns to solve for at that point. Well, what we have here is we have four. So there's no way that we could solve for these right now using statically determined methods of equilibrium. But what we can do is split this thing into two portions such as this, where we would split it right at the hinge so that we would have A, and then our reactions of AY and AX, just assume the directions for right now. And then we would have our forces on here of the eight kilonewtons coming in at an angle there. And then the second portion from B to C. Once again, for our C, let's just throw on our reactions of C sub Y, assume that upward and assume C sub X to the, to the left. And then we would have our force right here of the three kilonewtons per meter. That's supposed to be an N. So with the hinge, what you do is you split it. And then you have two sections here and you treat the hinge just like a pin reaction at that point. So let's say, let's look at our left segment here and let's just assume that these B reactions are canceling with the A reaction. So let's just assume B sub Y is down and then B sub X is to the left here. Well, what about the other side? Well, whenever you have a hinge and you split it, your reactions, the value that you get on this left side for B sub X and B sub Y, those magnitudes of those reactions have to be the same for B sub X and B sub Y on the right side. So if B sub Y was five uh, kilonewtons, this B sub Y over here will have to be five kilonewtons. Same thing with B sub X on the right side. However, when you're looking at one side to the other, the magnitudes will be the same, but the arrow directions will be in the opposite direction. So it's like looking in a mirror. It's the same person, but it's a ref it's a reflection, it's flipped. So same magnitudes, flipped arrow directions here. So B sub X will be five kilonewtons, but to the left on this side, to the right on this side. And then same thing, downward assumed on this one, it'll be going upward on that one. So whenever you have a hinge, same magnitudes across the hinge, but the arrow directions are flipped. Think of it like looking in a mirror. All right. So once you split this up into two portions, what you're going to do is you're just going to look at one portion at a time and try to solve for reactions here. Once again, treating the hinge like its own little reactions for that section. Just no moment transferring through there. So what's going to happen here? is that you're gonna look at one of the segments and try to solve as much as you can. If you look at the left segment first, if we look at this left one here, can we solve for anything there just yet? Well, let's say we try to sum moments right here at B. If we try to sum moments at B, and remember when you're looking at one segment, you're completely ignoring the other section. So completely ignore B to C. Well, A sub Y will have rotation about B and so does A sub X. 
Can't use my moment there to solve for anything. What about summing forces in the x direction? Well, we have a sub x, b sub x, too many unknowns. What about y? Same thing in a, y, b, y. So we really can't do anything with the left section just yet. Okay, so since we can't do anything with this one, we can't solve for anything, let's go to the other one and see if we can do anything. Well, if we sum forces in the y direction, what do we have? b sub y, c sub y, and then this force right here. Too many unknowns, once again. Ugh. So what about the x? b sub x, c sub x. Ugh. Once again, we get stuck. However, if we go to sum moments using that left section, well, we can sum moments at B or C. If we sum moments at C over here, look what happens. Summing moments at C, C sub Y will not include be included, and C sub X will not be included because they act right at point C. B sub X will be included, uh, but its perpendicular distance is zero. So technically, nope, it's not going to be included. B sub Y is the only thing that's going to be included here because it has a perpendicular distance of two meters. So B sub Y would be my only unknown there. And once we get one, that opens the floodgates and we can start getting our other reactions pretty quickly. So let's sum moments at point C using this right portion here. And B sub Y will be my only unknown there. So the way I have B Y going is upward on that section. It'll be rotating clockwise about point C, so that'd be minus B sub Y times its distance of two meters. And then the three kilonewtons per meter, well, we'll have three kilonewtons per meter times the distance it runs. It runs for two meters across that portion. And then what is its distance from its center to point C? Well, the center of this three kilonewtons meter will just be two divided by two. So it's one meter there to point C, so times one meter. And it will be rotating counterclockwise about point C, and that is positive based upon my sign convention. And that's all I would have for that right segment, equal to zero. Pretty simple equation to solve for. B sub Y will pop out to be three kilonewtons. And it came out to be a positive number, so that means my assumed arrow direction of up is correct. So now that I have this as three kilonewtons here, it is upward on this side. So that means the opposite segment, it is in the opposite direction, which means it's going downward that same magnitude of three kilonewtons. Okay, so what can I find here still by looking at my right segment? Well, still looking at the right segment here, I can get C sub Y. Because if you sum forces in the vertical direction equal to zero, I will have B sub Y, which is three kilonewtons of force. I would have my minus three kilonewtons per meter because it's going downwards times the distance it runs, which is two meters, and then plus C sub Y equal to zero. Well, C sub Y is my only unknown in there, and C sub Y pops out to be a positive three kilonewtons, which means up is the correct direction, and that's one of my reactions so far. Keep in mind, B is not really a reaction point. It's a hinge point. Some people do say it's reaction, but technically it is not. It is a hinge point. We use it to get our reactions. So can I solve for anything else on that right side over there? Uh, not just yet, because I don't know what B sub X and C sub X are. So let's hop back over to the left side and see if we can solve for anything over here now. Well, looking at this right side of the segment, can I solve for anything? Yeah, I could get A sub Y right away just by summing forces in the Y direction. And I can also get B sub X by summing moments at point A. Because now by summing moments at point A, A sub X and A sub Y disappear. I know what B sub Y is. B sub X would be my only unknown rotating about point A on that left side. So let's go ahead and let's just sum moments about point A for that left side equal to zero. So as I said, the A's would disappear we would have this eight kilonewtons and it is shown as two meters perpendicular to point A. So we don't have to split it up into the X and Y since we know that perpendicular distance. It will be rotating counterclockwise. So it will be minus eight kilonewtons times this two meters right here. <clears throat> and then we would have B sub X. It is rotating uh, counterclockwise. So we're gonna have plus B sub X times its perpendicular distance, which is a vertical distance of 1.5 meters down to A from point B. And then we would have B sub Y. It is rotating clockwise about point A, so it'd be negative 
three kilonewtons times its perpendicular distance, which is the horizontal two meters. And that's all I would have equal to zero. B sub x is the only unknown in that equation, so you can rearrange and solve for it. And we get a positive 14.67 kilonewtons, which means I assume the correct direction of left on the left segment there. So now with this equal to 14.67 kilonewtons, that means that this B sub x on this side is 14.67 kilonewtons. Since this one is to the left, this one will be to the right. Remember, same magnitude, opposite arrow direction at the hinges. So this really opens everything up. And then all I have to do is sum forces in the y direction to get a sub y on this left side, sum forces in the x to get a sub x, and then sum forces in the x on the right side to get c sub x. So let's go ahead and do all of that and get our last bit of reactions here. So sticking with the left side or the left segment here, let's sum forces in the vertical direction and we can get a sub y. Well, we assumed a sub y upward, so it's positive, minus off the three kilonewtons from b sub y, and then subtracting off the eight kilonewtons, which it does have its little triangle here of a three, four, five. So we just ratio it, since we're in the vertical, it'll be four divided by five. Remember, it's always gonna be divided by the denominator of that slope, and then it's always gonna be multiplied um, by the dimension that is measuring in the direction you're looking at. We're looking at the vertical, so it'd be the four. That's all we would have equal to zero. A sub y is the only unknown there, and it pops out to be 9.4 kilonewtons in that upward direction. And there's another reaction. All right, so let's keep moving forward here. And let's just stick with that, um, <clears throat> stick with that left segment. And if we sum forces in the x direction, we can get a sub x here. So we had to have a sub x assumed to the right. And then I'm going to have b sub x, which will be minus 14.67 the left, and then a positive three fifths of the eight. So minus off the 14.67 from b sub x, and then plus the eight kilonewtons times three fifths equal to zero. A sub x is the only unknown there. It pops out to be a positive 9.87 kilonewtons, which means I assumed correctly that it is to the right. Alrighty, and there's another reaction that I have, and I only have one more to get to, which is C sub x. Well, I can come back over here and visit this right side of the segment, and we would have B sub x, which is 14.67 to the right. There is no other horizontal force over here, so C sub x is by default equal to B sub x just in the opposite direction. So I'm not gonna write the summation equation for that. It's just, just looking at it, we would have 14.67 to the right. So we need 14.67 to the left here for C sub x. And there are my reactions. I found A sub x, A sub y, C sub x, and C sub y. So that's how you would be um, able to find reactions for a pinned pinned beam, if this thing ever wants to scroll for me, please. Thank you. <laughs> so that's how you would find the reactions for a pinned pinned beam with a hinge between those. So even though you look at the whole member as itself, you would think, oh, you can't determine it by using the simple equilibrium equations, but if you have a hinge, yeah, you can do it. Just split at the hinge and it forms a couple other reactions there. Now. The only issue with hinge problems is just getting started um, and looking at which segment you should do first. Sometimes it takes a little bit of trial and error just to be like, well, if we lose the left side here, just like what we tried to do in this problem, you can't really do anything at the start. So you just go to the other segment and see if you can solve for anything. Sometimes it just takes looking at the wrong one a few times to get to the actual right one, the correct one to use. So once you find which one, which segment you can start with and find your unknowns, and once you find one of them, it kind of opens up the floodgates there and you can find a lot more information. So it's just a little bit of that trial and error at the start. So don't get discouraged. If you just keep starting wrong and incorrectly, it just takes a little bit of time to see which one is going to be the better one or just trial and error it. So with all reaction problems, there's always a way to check your answers. So how do you think we're going to check our answers with this one? Well, we are going to piece this thing back together like the original picture here, and you just throw on your reactions that you found 
and just some uh, forces in the x and y directions and see if everything equals to zero. So let's go ahead and let's do that. So I'm just going to redraw it really quickly, just simplistically. So we have, what we have here is we have C sub X, which is going to the left, and it's 14.67 14 kilonewtons. We have C sub Y going upward, which is three kilonewtons. We have A sub Y going upwards over here, which is 9.4 kilonewtons of force. And then we have A sub X going to the right, which is 9.87 kilonewtons of force. And then we just throw all our throw on our known values here that we were given at the start of three, four, five slope for an eight kilonewtons of force. And then we have this nice rectangularly drawn shape there of uniform load of three kilonewtons per meter. And that runs for two meters right here. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to sum forces in the X direction, looking at this thing as a whole, and making sure that it comes out to be zero, that it is in the equilibrium. So looking at A sub X, we have 9.87 kilonewtons of force, which is to the right, so it's positive. We have C sub X, which is to the left, so minus 14.67 kilonewtons. And then we just have, excuse me, we just have this eight. So its component is to the right because it's down and to the right. So it's going to be eight kilonewtons times three fifths, positive. And does that come out to be zero? Well, yes, it does. So that means we have the correct reactions in the X direction. Everything cancels in its equilibrium in the X direction. Well, let's just repeat the process for the Y is equal to zero. Well, we would have A sub Y going upward, so 9.4. We have this eight kilonewtons of force, which is going downward, and that'll be eight kilonewtons times four fifths. We have this three kilonewton meter of uniform load or per meter times two meters. So basically the force times the distance it runs, it'll be negative since it's going downward. And then lastly, we have plus our three kilonewtons of force for C sub Y. And does that come out to be zero? Yes, it does. So since we have equilibrium occurring here and we checked our answers, we can confirm that our magnitudes and our arrow directions are correct. Now. There is a possibility that you may have messed up one of your uh, values throughout and still have incorrect reactions that are still in equilibrium at the end. It just means your proportions are off. And typically when that happens, that means something went wrong at the hinge. So you always want to double check that your reactions and B sub X and B sub Y in this case are concurrent and canceling with your A sub X, A sub Y on the left segment and your C sub X and C sub Y on the right segment. So that's one check we're not going to show, but you should be able to, you should check that as well, just to make sure that the hinge reactions for each segment are canceling with the overall reactions. So that's how you would solve a problem with a hinge. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solved as Friday, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below and subscribe to the channel because all of that does help us out. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.